Welcome to all of you who have joined us here at St. Patrick's in the city of Sydney. We come together to hear good news and to celebrate in a special way the presence of God in our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. No matter what the day has broken for us, we are always aware of our sinfulness, but we remember the wonderful forgiveness of our God and we ask for that. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Our prayer of praise. Glory to God in the highest and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We are celebrating the liturgy of the 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together at Shechem. Then he called the elders, leaders, judges, and scribes of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Then Joshua said to all the people, If you are not to serve the Lord, choose today whom you wish to serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The people answered, We have no intention of deserting the Lord our God, who brought us and our ancestors out of the land of Egypt, the house of slavery, who worked those great wonders before our eyes and preserved us all along the way we travelled and among all the peoples through whom we journeyed. We too will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. Taste, Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord turns his face against the wicked to destroy their remembrance from the earth. 
The Lord turns his eyes to the just and his ears to their appeal. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. They call and the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. To those whose spirit is crushed, he will save. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the trials of the just person, but from them all the Lord will rescue him. He will keep guard over all his bones. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Evil brings a death to the wicked. Those who hate the good are doomed. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. Those who hide in him shall not be condemned. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Ephesians. Give way to one another in obedience to Christ. Wives should regard their husbands as they regard the Lord. Since as Christ is head of the church and saves the body, so is a husband the head of his wife. And as the church submits to Christ, so should wives to their husbands in everything. Husbands should love their wives just as Christ loved the church and sacrificed himself for her to make her holy. He made her clean by washing her in water with a form of words so that when he took her to himself, she would be glorious with no speck or wrinkle or anything like that but holy and faultless. In the same way, Husbands must love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man to love his wife is for him to love himself. A man never hates his own body, but he feeds it and looks after it. And that is the way Christ treats the church, because it is his body, and we are the living parts. For this reason, a man must leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one body. This mystery has many implications, but I am saying it applies to Christ and the Church. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Reading from the Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. After hearing his doctrine, many of the followers of Jesus said, This is intolerable language. How could anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it and said, Does this upset you? What if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are spirit. They are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the outset those who did not believe, and who it was that would betray him. He went on, This is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows him. After this, many of his disciples left him. They stopped going with him. Jesus said to the twelve, What about you? Do you want to go away too? Simon Peter answered, Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life, and we believe. 
we know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away our sins. We have gathered here uh, to hear good news and uh, we listen to the readings. In fact, there is good news in each of the readings, but when we come to the Gospel reading, the one called specifically good news, we find those who are following Jesus, the disciples, that's more than the apostles, a lot of them cannot accept what Jesus is teaching them and so they leave, a lot of them leave. And he even asks his close followers, his apostles, are you going to go too? They may not understand exactly what he said, but they said, well, you have the words of eternal life. There's nowhere else to go. So it doesn't sound immediately like good news. But what was it that Jesus said to them that so upset them? If we look at the few verses back before in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, we find that Jesus has finally said to them, I am the bread of life and it is my flesh and that unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. It sounds awful when, when a human person first hear, just hears those words. But when we find what Jesus is really talking about, especially in the light of the whole history of God's relationship with his creatures, we find that it is something really wonderful. It is good news. God in several ways well, always loves his creatures, but there have been several great demonstrations, the freeing of the people from Egypt, and then the we remember the manna in the desert, but the manna is really the sign or the symbol leading to the people to realise the wonder of the law that God gave them for their good so that they might be one with the living God in keeping the law. But then God gives another wonderful sign. He sends his son, Jesus, and he preaches the fulfilment of the law. And he says really, uh, as he says, I am the bread of life. You must be one with me and it is uh, my body broken and my blood poured out. In other words, my body on the cross, the symbol, the symbol of the presence of God, not just a sign, a symbol. It ma makes present what it symbolises, the wonderful presence of our God. Now that was for those people at the time, but then remember Jesus said just before that at the Last Supper, taking some bread, this is my body given up for you, and the wine, this is my blood poured out for you. So for us today, we have the symbols of the blessed bread and the consecrated wine, making present in a special way our God, and reminding us of the wonderful love that that God has for us. So even in the uh, terrible time of our pandemic, when for many people uh, we are isolated, some of us even for most of the day and night on our own, a terrible isolation, don't ever let us think that our God has gone away. Our God is not subject to the virus, and he's not subject to any rules about trying to keep control of the virus. He is always with us. And we are encouraged by the signs and the symbols to express our belief in that God and to live that way, to have him as our food for life, not only our food, but, but uh, for our heart and our mind. So our God is there with us no matter how isolated we may be today. In a, when we, we who are here are able to share the symbols of the bread, of the consecrated bread and blessed wine, 
we will say a small prayer, a, a, a spiritual communion. And at that time I will ask all of you who are with us to pledge your belief in the presence of God with you now and we'll have that special prayer. But he is with you no matter how difficult your life is. Now we'll proclaim together what we believe by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare now to celebrate the Eucharist, let us first consider our intention and we remind you that we have the intentions here of those that have asked us specially to pray. The intentions are here on the altar. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you to receive us with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands, praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the glory of the Holy Church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrificial sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, 
we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Anthony our Bishop and all who minister in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died. In your mercy, welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer to those with us a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, see the world have mercy. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. We have a moment now for spiritual communion I mentioned, that special prayer for those who are not able to receive the symbols of the body and blood of Christ. Make your intention first, your belief in the presence of God with you, no matter where you are and how isolated you are. My Jesus, I believe you are really here with me in my isolation. I love you more than anything in the world and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now as I do when I actually receive you. Before our concluding prayer, there is an announcement from our parish priest, Father Michael. Father Michael urges you all to take care of each other. The pandemic can be extremely challenging, especially for those under lockdown. It can also be a time of grace. Think of ways, for example, phone calls, that you can support someone else. You might also take the opportunity to read the St. Patrick's e-news. It always has inspiring and informative reading. You might like to join with one or two others to discuss what you read there. You can subscribe to the e-news on St. Pat's website. It's free. Let us make our concluding prayer. 
Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our worship together is ended, but let each of us go now to preach the gospel by the way we treat each other. Thank you.